Great. Well, now, uh, thank you very much for that. We're happy to recognise our 2013 Microsoft Research Faculty Fellows, and I'll ask Harold Javid to join me on stage. Harold. Thank you. <laughs> These are the faculty fellows. <laughs> no, we'd like to bring them out one at a time. And... Uh, present them with their award and uh, greet them here with all of you. And will Michael Milford from uh, Queensland University of Technology join us? Thank you very much. Michael, thank you. well done. Thanks very much indeed. So thank you for coming and please welcome Microsoft Chairman Bill Gates. It's great to be here. Uh, I haven't been here for over five years, so it's great to see the way this event has grown. And I think it's fair to say that uh, we're in a golden age of computer science. Uh, the original vision of Microsoft, uh, that we had a dream about what software could do if we had infinite computing and infinite storage, uh, that almost is our reality today. And so it's amazing for me to see how that's being applied, whether it's user interface, uh, with vision, speech, pen, uh, with uh, modeling in rich data areas, with machine learning. Uh, you know, it really seems like that idea of the powerful assistant that can help us get things done, help us drive deep insights uh, that uh, the progress we'll make in the next five years and ten years will be really unbelievable. Uh, even our friends in the hardware industry are giving us uh, better screens, uh, uh, better sensors, uh, things that let us exercise uh, the magic of software. I just wanted to get your feeling on how's the revolution going? <laughs> well, the word robot can be interpreted very broadly. Um, you know, anything that we can use, uh, that we can automate. I mean, you know, the history of farming is the history of automation. And, you know, so you can think of all those great farm things as, as you know, very specialized robots. I saw one recently where they actually use a set of cameras, and so as they go through the field, they actually see what's a weed, what's a plant, and they imply uh, herbicide to get rid of those weeds. Now, the cost of that today, of actually having the thing that you drag around the field that does the visual recognition and is smart about doing that targeting, that's rich world farming today. Uh, for poor world farming, it's much more about taking satellite data and, and looking at things in a broad, uh, broad area, soil health, when you should plant, plant disease, things of that, that nature. You know, I do think robots will raise some very interesting issues as they replace certain types of labor. Uh, and uh, you know, we've always wanted to have a robot that can go out into rural areas and help out in certain healthcare type things. That's a very high bar in terms of what type of robotic capability you have to have. Say to help do a C-section in a rural area where you know, that ab ab absolutely needs to be done. You know, so I don't think that's in the next 10 years, but maybe in the, the next 20 or 30, uh, that kind of physical expertise can be uh, made available very, very broadly. Uh, robotics continues to, you know, in terms of the, the numbers and deployment, look pretty small, but you know, we're always on the verge of when is the breakthrough going to happen. And certainly the, the work you're all doing on vision, planning, modeling, those things, you know, it feels like, boy, are we we awfully close on that. Uh, I think it's going to be in developed countries and changing the job markets in developed countries where we're first going to have to face the, the generally pluses but also the, the disruption that, that that kind of innovation will cause. Take a question from the center. 